Hey, brothers, sisters in Christ. This is Chris from Open Eyes of Heart. And um, I'm so happy to be here to share another dream that I had. Actually, two short dreams that I had um, a while back. But the Lord was pressing on my heart that, Chris, you need to reveal, you need to, um, reveal to the young generation, the young church more. More because we're in a short time right now. And um, there's so many things going on in the world. And the Lord, you know, this is desperate times. And the Lord, He's calling His family back. His, he's calling his his children back and um, he, he made that known to me last night in a dream and it really touched my heart when he um, when he spoke to me he was like Chris you gotta reveal more you gotta release more to them I need my sheep back I need my sheep back that's what I've been hearing in my heart from the Lord so anyways this is a short dream that I have and I want to share it um, I had this on May 22nd yeah, May 22nd in 2022. So it was a few months ago. And um, this is the dream. This is the dream that I got. Um, I was walking in the butcher shop. And um, it was kind of, you know, like a butcher shop where they um, they butch up meat, like cows and stuff, you know, for people to get fresh meat there. So anyways, I walked in there and I seen a whole line of people. A line of people. Now, there was something wrong with this picture when I looked at it. I seen a bunch of people feeling they looked empty. They looked like a shell that was empty. They had no spirit in them. They had no life in them. They were like zombies. Now before I go into this dream, before I go into this dream about, I just went into it, but you know what I mean. Before I go further into this dream, I want to um, speak about an example of zombies. Now you see, a zombie, now I'm not talking about Hollywood and the movies and stuff. I'm not talking about those kind of zombies. I'm talking about a metaphoric word that the Lord uses for a zombie. Now, you see, the Lord, he has a very interesting language how he speaks to us. And it's been proved many times throughout the Bible when Jesus Christ came, came for his people, the lost sheep of Israel. He gave many examples of parables and they were all metaphoric parables. So that's what the Lord speaks about. So here we go. A zombie example, what God would bring up, would be a person that claims to be alive, but was, was without true spiritual life. So what does that tell you, people? Someone who, that's a Christian, that goes to church, but is stuck in the world at the same time. That he's not fully, they're not fully in the relationship with the Lord. They're not worshiping. They're not praying. They're, they're going in the world. They're going, they're going hanging out with friends. They're drinking. They're not making God first. They have, they have one foot in, one foot out. So that's someone who spiritually thinks they're spiritually alive. That they're a true Christian, but they're without true spiritual life. They're not, they're not filled with the Spirit. They're not devotional, fully devotional to God. In his ways and living his ways another another metaphoric meaning for a zombie is someone who's un unable to think for themselves so a person who can't think for themselves and needs to go to other people to get answers because they're not being led by the Holy Spirit if they're not being led by the Spirit they can't think for themselves and if they are thinking for themselves they're doing it in the flesh so they're that's, that's not a win-win situation there people Anyways, another metaphor meaning for zombie is someone who's bewitched and controlled by another. So either somebody has done witchcraft on them, or they have an open doorway with a demonic spirit with demonic mental strongholds in their mind. So that's what it's speaking about. And um, with that, I'm going on with the dream. So I was in the um, butcher shop, and I seen a, lot of, a line of people who looked spiritually dead. They had no life in them. They were walking up to the butcher shop counter. And there was a butcher stuck in the table. And one after another. Not to get graphic here people. Not to get graphic. But one after another. I seen them banging their heads into this hatchet on the table. Now not, now they were all falling down afterwards. And I seen a little gore. You know I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to um, gross anyone out. But one person after another were banging their heads into this. Until they're all, till they all dropped, and um, this is the interpretation. People, a believer in Christ who is in a place for judgment is seen prophetically sheep without a shepherd that will be in judgment and death, possibly death, but mostly judgment for mocking Christ with their words, and will be in decision making in following Christ, or there will be a hopelessness of being 
there will be no hopeless there will be hopelessness of not being born again for the atonement of sins so the Lord is saying here people that um there's people out there living in the world they're not they're not taking heed of the message of God of the Bible of the gospel and of many prophets who are sharing the word of God they're not taking heed of the word of God and they're mocking Christ they're not believing in what he has done they're not believing and taken seriously in the life that they're living that the life they should be living according to the gospel and through the truth of God's word and that they're going by their own living standards so that's what I got in this people and he wants people to start making decisions. There's going to be decision making for following Christ. You guys are in it now because we're in the end days. He wants you guys to make a decision. Are you going to choose the world and the enemy, the devil, Satan? Or are you going to go by Christ and how he wants you to live? How you live in righteousness and purity? What, where are you guys going to choose? Pick it, people. Um, Without without Christ, there's no atonement for sins. That's what he's saying. You need to come to him. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And without him, there's no atonement. You cannot be forgiven. You need not just to go to him and say, Lord, forgive me, and then go back to your life. No, it doesn't work like that, people. You need to follow him. You need to pick up your cross daily and follow him. You need to crucify the flesh. You need to get out of the world. You need to start reading the Bible, fasting, and praying. Okay, people? So that's what I got from this dream. Here's another dream, people. Um, I got this on, let's see, August 19th, 2022. And I call it um, the world burning on fire while going up in the airplane. So in this dream, I was, I was going up in the airplane, high up in the airplane. But I looked in the window. I looked out the window. I seen fire on earth. I knew it was judgment. I had a knowing in my spirit it was judgment. So here's the dream. In this dream, I had a knowing that something very bad was going to happen on earth. And I seen a plane with it. I was in the plane driving up to escape. Here, a believer in Christ who has prophetic understanding on humanity and the non-faith realm. Chris, who has seen prophetically humanity that is in trouble and needs purification in Jesus Christ. One comes judgment and this will take place at revival. So this is what I'm seeing. A revival. Judgment is coming. And these, this fire that I see burning. Now it doesn't mean the sun's going to scorch the earth. But he's saying in the metaphoric meaning that judgment is going to begin soon. I see a big earthquake and stuff. I see many things happening. You see pestilence. You see diseases. You see all these, um, these tornadoes and all these, these bad weathers. Like Florida just got slammed. They just got slammed and other states are getting slammed and this is happening worldwide just because it's not happening in your state does not mean that judgment's not here it's already here it's been here for months and it's getting more intense these are the birth pains people wake up see what the Lord is trying to say come to Christ you know so um there's they so he's saying that you guys are in trouble you need purification in the blood of Jesus Christ to be redeemed just like the other dream I just mentioned but he's also saying that that during revival many people you guys will see the judgment coming at hand you will go to revival you will come to Christ and many will be saved and that's amen blessing I love that so people rough times are coming ahead and the Lord, He wants you to drop all and come to Christ. That's what He's saying. We are in the end times, people. And and I had a dream, a dream last night also from the Lord that He put on my heart. Now this is last night. I was speaking to a friend about the invasion that is going to be soon coming. His name was Sam. And 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 the world, you know, after that, you know, he was kind of shocked. He was ignoring me in the dream. He was ignoring me. He did not believe me. I spoke about an invasion that was going to come. Invasion that's going to come to America after a big dramatic event, which I believe is the earthquake. It could be something else, but I think it's God shaking the earth soon. And then after that, an invasion, soon after, I don't know how long, God doesn't give dates, but soon after, after that earthquake, an invasion will come to America and God is going to use Russia China and Iran to invade America and that's going to be God's sword for judgment against our nation and this is serious I am serious about this now this dream I got from someone else in in this prophetic uh, ministry that I'm in 
but the Lord was confirming it to me through last night's dream that I need to be speaking this message to people so that's what I'm doing now I'm speaking it Lord people please please come to Jesus now please come to him now there's no time time is running out and I don't it it hearts it heart aches me to see people go to judgment I don't want to see people go to judgment I want to see people come to Christ I want I want to see people saved and when I spoke about this to him he ignored me in the dream that's he, he's representing the, the young generation the young generation that's mocking Christ and that they're walking away so come on people without faith we cannot please God so you guys you need to grow in faith because you need to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the what he did on the cross so anyways people that's the big message now here I want I want to share a scripture a few scriptures that I have and um, this first scripture has to do with the butcher shop kind of in the way it goes to James 5 5 you have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence you have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter what does that mean people what is that telling you it means that people you guys are living in luxury. You're living on the temptations and the cravings of the world. Living in the world, eating every day, um, fattening yourselves, um, caring about the desires of the flesh and not helping other people out. Not living the life for Christ in his heart, in his spirit. You're not being run by the spirit of Christ. So that's what he's saying. Guys, you need to turn away from this, the world. Forget the world. Turn to Christ. Live for Christ. Learn His statutes, His ways, God's commandments, His ways, His ways of living, with living as a servant for Christ and for other people that are out there. Live for them. Live for them. Not putting them first. Putting their lives before yours. I'm not saying to be homeless on the streets and stuff. Of course, work and stuff. But help other people out. Live for them. So that's what the Lord's saying. Here's another one. This is Psalms 21, 7 to 10. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them a fairy oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall be be destroyed from the earth and their seed among the, the children of men so what the Lord's saying is that people wrath it the Lord doesn't like unrighteousness and the way you guys are living and there will be wrath to come on the world there'll be judgment to come on the world and the people these fruits that you guys are bearing they're not from God it's of the world it's bad fruits like it says in the Bible like it's spoken in the Bible it's bad and the seed from among the children of men their seeds are becoming bad and polluted the seeds grows into the fruit but the seed is also kind of like your spirit in the way for example it's like your spirit that's corrupted by the by the um the world and um the temptations and everything and sin most importantly it corrupts it becomes bad fruit and the lord's saying the lord's saying that um it's going to be like a fairy oven in time of thine anger he, you know, swallow them up in his wrath with fire to devour them. What's that talking about? His judgment on earth devouring people because of their wickedness and their spirit and bearing bad fruits. People, please come to the Lord. Here's another one. Therefore, thus says the Lord. This is from Ezekiel 24, 9 to 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the Lord of God, woo to the bloody city. I will, I will even make the pile for a fire great. Heap on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh, and spice it well, and let the bones be burned. Then set up empty upon the coals thereof, of the brass of it may be hot, and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. So from the beginning of this text, I'm seeing that the Lord has his um, judgment coming on this, this bloody people, this bloody city of people that are living in sin. And he's saying, make the pile for it great, the fire great, throwing all the bad, all the bad branches that are bearing bad fruit into the fire because you guys are living the wrong way in sin. And he's also saying in this text at the next line that can spice up the flesh and make the bones be burnt. But he's trying to say that set it upon coals thereof, the coals represent purification purification that when he's burning the flesh that 
that people will be cleansed through purification through the heart, their heart, their own judgment. He's saying that people will get purification from their hearts because people, you guys are going to be coming to Christ. You guys are going to be looking, searching out God in Christ. You're going to be coming to redemption. You're going to be looking for redemption, purification, and um, you're going to get renewed in the spirit. You're going to become born again. You're going to become cleansed through judgment. Not, not all of you will be burnt up in the fire. Not all of you. There's going to be people that come saved. There's going to be people that take it serious. And that's what this verse is talking about. That all, it'll be, the fire will re, it'll recline it. It'll recline you. You'll be redeemed. You'll be cleansed. You'll be washed clean. And the fire will change you. And I'm talking not just spiritually. I believe that many of you will also begin change transformation throughout the mind the spiritual renewal along along with pressing in with fasting and coming into a deeper cleansing not just of the spirit but of 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 killing your flesh so that's what i'm sharing with you people of these verses i hope it opens you up i hope it opens up your heart and um, like i said um i don't want to repeat things but the, the lord he's crying out to you people and judgment's coming soon invasion and so much more Come to Christ. He loves you. Um, give your life to Him. And um, with that message, I'm saying God bless. Amen. And um, that's that's all. I love you guys so much. And um, let this let the words of Christ touch your hearts. Okay, go into the Bible. Let His words touch your hearts. And with that, Amen. Take care, guys, brothers and sisters. Love you.